ones that well, I, I think expired. what they're yeah, I think that they're it would have expired at the end of 2021, but I, my gut feeling is that the owners and players are trying to get the changes in place so they get the 17th game goes into effect in 2020. Mm -hmm. I don't know how a lot of teams would feel about get um, because it, obviously that's going to be like uh, some teams are going to have nine home games. It would be no, no, no. We'll, no what they're going to do is fin finesse it to a point where there has to be a neutral site game for everybody. So there'll be eight home games. It's just a matter of how the schedule make where it's working out. And here's what I'm going to say: this before night comes on the program, I call this a Green Bay Packers rule. The only way that you're going to get them to go overseas is by having that oddball game. Because they're not giving up a game no, at Lambeau Field. absolutely Fail. not. Cheeseheads are going to be in effect wherever they go, though. Yeah, but on the other side of the occasion, a lot of times what will happen is a lot of teams don't want to see the Packers give up that game because the Cheeseheads travel really well. So that's how I believe it's going to work out. I call it the Cheeseheads rule. I'm going to relate this um, this comment, Scott, a little bit back to music, the, the idea of expanded games. You ever listen to the Pink Floyd album, Dark Side of the Moon? One of the beautiful things about Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon is that every track segs into one another, and the subject about this game expansion is going to segue exactly into what we're going to talk about with Damon, and it's something we briefly touched on on Tuesday. So, you know, stay tuned for that, fans. We you know, obviously, we for the last couple of minutes, we've talked a little bit about game expansion. So, I think when we're going to talk what we're going to talk, you'll see the correlation there. It may not seem obvious right now because the subject hasn't been discussed, but if you listen to our Tuesday show, which you can find on Spreaker, Spotify, and the iTunes Podcasting Network, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. But there's a lot of um, overlap with these topics for sure. Okay. Oh, well, I'll take your word for it. Good stuff. All right. Meanwhile, we have an update in the National Football League. Cleveland Browns currently lead the Pittsburgh Steelers 7 0. 7.40 left to go in the first quarter. So I think you can agree that, and you and I can agree that Mike Tomlin's just you know monitoring Ben Roethlisberger day by day, week by week. It, look, Mason Rudolph's done a pretty good job for them. You know, he's they, he's won a couple of games for them. I mean, they're, what I believe, what, they're a game over 500, so they're a lot better than everybody expected them to be. As much as you and I are never going to get it right about the manager of the year, okay, because that's a tough call depending on what's what. So we won't go there. We we probably will agree on the fact that Mike Tomlin, with the job that he's done, starting out one and four to five and four, would certainly be a strong candidate with all the pieces that he's lost between Bell, Antonio Bryant, and Roethlisberger. That would have a uh, the the inside track to become coach of the year in the NFL. Yeah, and Mason Rudolph as a starter is five and two, so, right? Because so. Roethlisberger got hurt in that second game. Obviously, that first game in New England was an absolute, you know, bloodbath. It was the playoffs all over again. You know, fair catch or not, a couple of years ago. But I don't know, man. I, I, you know, I think that's a sign of a great coach, though. I think Belichick did the same thing when Matt Castle went well, in for Tom Brady. Too, too, man. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, hanging around me a little longer. What the hell is wrong with I you? I knew about that story because oh. Brady got hurt the same all way that Foles right. did. Okay, that's what I need out of you, Weiss. Yeah, Hello. Well, you remember? I mean, obviously they went eleven and five. That's the only year since. Belichick's first season in New England, which was 2000, right. they went 5 and 11. They didn't make the playoffs. And that's still a pretty good season. 11, I mean, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, so. you call it the Super Bowl Blues, which I'll talk about a little bit when we talk about the Rams game with um, Bill Winters at 10 o'clock. But yeah, I mean, look, you give Mike Tomlin the you know, coach of the year right now. I think he's done a great job. You can give Marone coach of the year, too, if we're talking about. Well, we'll talking see about, about that. that we'll I mean, see. look, he's, with what, what he did with a rookie quarterback, you know, he deserves a lot of credit. All right, well, meanwhile, for any of the people that heard the uh, Go Blue, yeah, this is a Michigan tune. Get ready for Michigan, Michigan State. Otherwise, we've got a guy who is from the Michigan area named Damon Knight. And, Damon, yes, yes. this is a – How's it going, Scoop? Uh, What's up, Damon? How much? Uh, let's so, go for it, buddy. Yeah, so um, I got some unfortunate news on November 11th, uh, Monday uh, morning uh, – Charles Rogers, the former Lions, also Michigan State wide receiver, died of liver disease. Some think it's uh, cancer-related. Um, he was a three-time athlete at uh, Saginaw High School. He played basketball, football, and track. And he won a state championship in both track and football. He then uh, uh, signed a letter of intent to Michigan State, where he broke a Spartan record of uh, 27 career touchdowns. He also broke an NCCAA record with 13 consecutive games with a TD catch. He won the uh, Bio Tikhanov uh, Award for Best Receiver in the Country, and he was uh, taken uh, second overall by the Lions. 
um, he had a history of drug problems uh, with him uh, while with them, and he only uh, caught uh, 440 yards receiving. Uh, he played 15 games and started up nine of those, only had four career touchdowns. And so, you know, he, uh, he had a lot of talent, and he just unfortunately had drug problems and a lot of just mental um, lapses in his career, and he wasn't, you know, getting the help that he needed. So it's very unfortunate. All right, Damon. So we briefly talked about this on yes. Tuesday, obviously. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I just posed this to Scott because we were talking to Jaguars insider yeah. David Levin about, you know, the possibility with the new CBA of a game of um, possible expansion to 17 yeah. or even 18 games. Now, you know, I said this. I'm yeah. like, you ever listen to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon? I feel like all of us have. It's yes. an album. It's yeah. an al- yes. One of the beautiful things about that album is the yeah. fact that a multitude of tracks segue into each other. Obviously, yeah. a lot of similar sounds that you hear and yeah. a song will echo into another. The conversation we had with Levin at the end is kind of like this, because I feel like, and this is just my opinion, when you hear about athlete, former NFL players dying young due to issues stemming, and which I believe from their career on the gridiron, it's going to make this, it's going to throw up, cast a dark cloud over this discussion of possible game expansion. Look, if they're going to add 18 games to the schedule, you know, and it's going to, you know, expand two games, you're going to have to think about the incentives that you're going to have to give players off the field. Obviously, yes. I mentioned Terry Bradshaw and all the hits that he took, you know, you know, and his struggles yeah. with anxiety and depression, his long time, you know, taking of the antidepressant Paxil and just the effects that, you know, playing football had on him and, yeah. you know, how the league has had problems with, you know, ensuring the fact that these players need to have a life after they play. You know, Larry Fitzgerald yeah. may be an exception to that rule. But don't you think that seeing a player whose you know, addiction to painkillers may have stemmed from all the brutal hits that he took onto the f- on the field, don't you think that, yes. you know, it really doesn't help us progress when we discuss ga- possible season expansion? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. You know, they need something to, to ease the pain. It's, it eventually gets overwhelming, and so you get addicted to it, and then, you know, it just stems from another drug problem to another. And so um, it's like, you know, taking heroin for the first time. I've never done it, you know. <laughs> yeah, you're not Kurt uh, Yeah, yeah, and, and just, uh, you know, if, if one person's saying, oh, you really get addicted after you try it, and another person says it, you got to tend to believe them. And so, um, it's unfortunate. And to expand the season, I just think you're risking the players' health further along, not only in their career, but later in life as well. You know, like some athletes, like uh, Thomas Holmstrom, I heard an interview of him saying he could barely get out of bed. Wow. You know, and, yeah, and so... Well, he took a beating... In, my life like that. Yeah, he took a beating in front of the net like anybody yeah. I've ever seen. I'm glad you brought that up. For it, though. Oh, yeah. He, he would sacrifice his body, that's for sure. So let's yeah. go on to Rodgers for a moment, okay? Yeah. And that's it. You're right. I mean, a very abbreviated career, unfortunately. He's labeled a bust uh, by yes. NFL standards, number two pick overall. The Andre, yeah. jo- uh, I think Johnson ended up going third to the Texans. How did that work yes. out? So, you know, a local kid, Mary Uchi's first All pick. Yeah. But the one thing I noticed that the Lions are doing is they're honoring – Charles Rogers on Sunday. Yes. Is that correct? So tell me a little bit about that. Honoring him. Yeah. I, you know, it's. Yeah, he's a boss, but you got to remember he's part of your family, and to right. honor him is the right thing to do. You know, it would be a disgrace if they didn't. You know, uh, players, a player's performance on the field doesn't define their character and who they are as a person. They have. You know, when he was at Michigan State, he had multiple teammates saying how how courteous he was. He wasn't letting the spotlight, you know, dictate his personality towards towards his teammates. You know, there's no I in team, and he carried that on and off the field. Uh, unfortunately, he got a hold of drugs, and so it, it, it defined his professional career. And so, but it, it's awesome to see that um, for the Lions to do that on Sunday, you know, so... All right, so we'll talk about the Lions Cowboys. You're obviously in back yeah. home. Uh, give me a prediction. I know I know Stafford hasn't been cleared to play. Jeff Driscoll. Yes. So you know, let, what are they thinking? What kind of a game do they expect back home? Uh, they're going to expect a really, really, really tough game. You're, you're playing a really good team. Um, as you know, our defense struggles against the run, and they have one of the best running backs in the league, and Ezekiel Elliott. And I respect the guy's talent. 
And so you got Dak Prescott, who's starting to really come into his own. He had a little bit of a setback this year, but I think he's going to really get it going. He's not like Baker Mayfield right now, where he's just struggling to find the end zone. Right. So, you know, I expect it to be a really, really hard, uh, tough-fought game. Um, I don't expect the Lions to win this one. I don't mean to be negative, but I just, I'm just i seeing reality, and what I'm seeing from the Lions, they're not going to be enough for this team. This team's going to steamroll all over them. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm expecting to lose by like at least three touchdowns. Really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's okay. Well, that's fine. You're there. Obviously, you yes. uh, read a lot of the news clippings around there. You certainly get yep. a glance for talk radio and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. Dallas wins by double digits. Uh, how much by double digits, I don't know. But, yeah, yeah. Dak Prescott's heck of a quarterback. I think the X yeah. factor in this game, I believe, is Amari Cooper should eat the yeah. Lions secondary up alive. I don't know how effective Kenny Galladay yeah. is going to be with Driscoll at quarterback, although he did yes. squeak out some yards at the very end of the Bears game. But I, oh, I yeah. don't know. But and I don't know. a lot of things that I saw that, like, I don't see out of Stafford. Like, you know, you'll get Stafford downfield accuracy. He's not that accurate, in my opinion. You know, um, just from listening to fans to listening to even my parents say, hey, like, you know, this guy just overthrows his receivers time and time again. Right. And so, and I'm seeing it, and you'll get Driscoll, and you're just like, dude, like, why can't Stanford do that? You know, mm-hmm. like, why can't he be that aggressive? Why can't he drive the, fall, drive the ball down the field with confidence? Yeah, but I love Stanford. I'll tell you right now, of all the quarterbacks oh, I've yeah. had, uh, he's a gunslinger. I love his sidearm yes. uh, throws yeah. from time to time. He. Matthew Stafford's a very heady, cagey quarterback that's done really well. And I yes. think that as uh, he, the more he sits out, the more Lions fans should really get behind the fact that uh, you realize how bad yes. you had it for a lot of years. This kid provides stability at arguably the most difficult position uh, on the field. Yes. So I love Matt Stafford. Nobody will, oh, yeah. anybody that takes oh. a shot at him, I'll defend him all day long. Go yes. ahead. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah not, and I'm sorry. I have to apologize. I do agree with you. I have you. to it's apologize. Right. Uh, it's Stafford, okay. Yeah. Stafford, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Detroit guy, and I, I'm, I'm going to support any Detroit athlete to the very end, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, he's way better than Joey Harrington. You know, I mean, uh, Harrington is the same, you know, to probably upside as him coming in and just could live up to it. And Stafford, I think he's he's lived up to it. It's just it's been a slow progression, you don't, know. Don't ever, um, don't ever apologize in here for making an opinion, buddy. That don't make deal. Yes. We don't accept yes. apologies, so we don't need them. Go ahead, Lewis. I think the biggest. I think this yep. game could be a lot closer if Elliott has another, you know, subpar game that he did last week. You know, right. if you yep. follow Skip Bayless on Twitter, which I'm sure all of us do, you know, he's an interesting yep. follow. Bayless was decked yes. out in his Elliott gear, and then he, you know, goes Elliott's, you know, his caption or something on the lines yep. of Elliott's going to go off. And what does Elliott do? Twenty carries for like forty-seven yards. Yeah, and he it, stirs the ball. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's the closest to the shirt thing at that position right now that we we have. But I think if the defense holds him and he has a, a repeat performance similar to last week, I think Detroit will be in it more. Again, you know, Driscoll's not Stafford, but at the same time, you know, they want him there anyway. And he's not a bad backup option to have. And and you know what, too? The Lions do play tough at home. So they, they're, yes. they, they're a very inspired football team. They draw pretty well at Ford Field. So... Uh, you know, yes. again, double digits, yeah. But, you know, I've seen a lot of crazy situations in the Lions-Dallas series. In fact, many before we let you off the line, yes. I once saw a game that went into overtime and the Lions won it in t- Texas Stadium uh, when Barry Sanders was playing. So it was one of the best football games I've ever seen. So I don't know yeah, what, if yeah. anything duplicates this. Um, you know, I look at the, uh, the the playoff game that we played against them a couple of years ago. Uh, that pass interference supposedly at Des Bryant right. as he was going down, and that cost us the win. And so, you know, yeah, it's definitely a rival. And I remember Des Bryant calling out Calvin Johnson, saying basically, "You're old," and Calvin Johnson destroyed him in that game. And so, you know, yeah, there's definitely a rival there, you know. And so I, I, I want the Lions to win. I don't expect them to win. I mean, I don't think any of us did or do. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so I just uh, – we'll see what happens on Sunday, and then hopefully it's not as bad as I think it's going to be. But, you know, um, I don't expect much. Okay, well, we'll find out. Meanwhile, thanks again yeah. for being on the program, and we'll see what you, you cook up on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, yes. and, uh, Damon, as always. Uh, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lewis. Yep. Have yeah, a good no problem, man. Yep. Keep it up. See you yep. later. Yeah. Bye. Yep. So you saw the uh, transitory thing I was talking about, how our one subject with David. Uh, I, I'm starting to get you figured out, pal. Yeah, but um, 
No, I mean, look, I don't know where Driscoll went to school. I don't know what's kind of...